Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 3.1, Introduction to Decimals. We encounter decimals on a daily basis, especially if we deal with money. In this example, maybe we have to write a check for our tuition. Pay to Bay College 1,286 and 45 one hundredths, or 45 cents, right? And we'd write that out as 1,286 and 45 one hundredths dollars. That's how uh, our nomenclature, or the way we write a check, that's the way we do it. Now, because we deal with decimals on such a regular basis, we have to have a deep understanding of them. And the key to decimals is knowing your place values. It's something we talked about uh, in the beginning of this video series. But we have to reassure that we know it. So we're going to identify these place values. They're very important when we work with decimals. So the first example we're going to do is, with this number from our check, we're going to identify what place values specific digits have. The first one we're going to look at is example A here, 8. What value is it at? Well, if we look at these values, we know that to the left of our decimal, is our values that start with the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, so on and so forth. And our 8 in this example is in the tens place. We're familiar with the tens place. So we'll just write tens. What about the 4? Well, the 4 is to the right of the decimal. Every value to the right is an increment of 1 tenth. It would take 10 of these to make a 1. It would make 10 in this spot to make a tenth. So if we think of this as being 1 tenth here, and this is 1 tenth of 1 tenth, this would be 1 one hundredth. So our place values, this is the tenths, the hundredths. Another factor would be a thousandths, so on and so forth. Ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, so on. So the 4 we see is in the tenths. So we would write that as the tenths, indicating that it is to the right of the decimal, a smaller value, a factor of 10 smaller. The 5, as we just saw, 1 one hundredth, this is in the hundredths. So we would write it out as hundredths. Now, if we had to write out this check and our line would not allow us to write this in words, let's do that just for practice. Now, when writing a decimal in words, we always go to the digit that has the last non-zero digit. Well, here we have 5 as the furthest digit to the right that's non-zero. So we read it just as we would read any other number. This is 45. 45, what place value is that last non-digit or non-zero digit value in? Well, that's in the hundredths. So we would call this 45. Hundredths. So let's write that out. 45, just like we would write the normal number 45, we qualify it by writing hundredths. 45 hundredths. So it's very important to know your place values when you work with decimals. All right, let's look at these three examples. Write as a fraction or a mixed number in simplest form. Now, what a fraction, or what a decimal is, is another way to re represent parts of a whole. Well, that's what we use fractions for. So decimals and fractions are interchangeable. And we can do this by writing a decimal as a fraction just by knowing their place values. So I'm going to read this number because the decimals here, this is 39 hundredths. I'm going to write it as I wrote it, 39 one hundredths. That's how simple it is to write a decimal to a fraction. We essentially just read it out loud. 39 one hundredths, we write it as 39 one hundredths. They're even read the same. Now, the next thing to do is when it's in a fraction form, you always want to reduce your fractions. Let's look at the next example. Now, we could write it as a fraction or a mixed number. And I say, well, I have values that are 1 or greater, so I can write this as a mixed number. I have negative 9, 
And just like we would read this decimal, it's negative 9 and 9 one hundredths. I can write it as negative 9 and 9 one hundredths. And now it's written as a mixed number, negative 9 and 9 one hundredths. What about this one here? Well, I see I have values to the left of the decimal greater than 1. So I have 11. And then here, I have 406. Well, this is in the thousands, tenths, hundredths, thousands. So I would write this out as 11 and, a decimal is always read as and, 406 thousands. Now, because this is a fraction, I can reduce that. I couldn't reduce 9 one hundredths. That's in simplest form. I couldn't reduce 39 one hundredths. That's in simplest form. But I can reduce 406 over 1,000. I identify 406 as an even number. 1,000 is an even number. Let's start there. This would be 11. And then we can factor out a 2. This would be 203. And factor out a 2 of this, or take half of it, well, half of a 1,000 is 500. So now my reduced number is 11, 000, or excuse me, 11 and 203 five hundredths. So 11 and 203 five hundredths. Now the reason why we would reduce this, because if we're working in a fraction, I'd rather deal with a denominator of 500 than a denominator of 1,000 if I had to do any additional math with this fraction. All right. <clears throat> So now that we have some insight into decimals, let's insert some inequalities. We've worked with inequalities before when we talked about integers. And now that we're dealing with decimals, we're going to reapply that same concept. Now here I have 12 one hundredths. Here I have 15 one hundredths. They're both in the hundredths. We want to determine, well, what is smaller, what is greater? Well, 12 hundredths is less than 15 hundredths. And if we relate this to something, we know maybe it's cents. If I have 12 cents or I have 15 cents, I know that 12 cents is less than, it always points to the smaller one, opens towards the bigger. 12 cents is less than 15 cents. So 12 one hundredths is less than 15 one hundredths. OK, let's look at this next one. We're going to determine if it's less than, greater than, or equal to. Well, if we read this number, it's 984 thousandths. And if we go here, if you recall what I said before, we go to the first non-zero digit. Well, that would be this one here. Since those are zeros, we don't have to continue on. There's no other non-zero digits to the right. So I can read it 984 thousandths. So these are actually read the same, 984 thousandths, 984 thousandths. If they are read the same, they are the same. These values would then be equal. What about these here? Well, let's read them. This is 1 tenth. This is 1 in the hundredths, 1 one hundredth. 1 tenth, 1 one hundredth. Now, as we move to the left near our decimal or even past it, the values are getting greater by a factor of 10. We talked about the 1 tenth. If I go, this is 1 tenth, this is 1 one hundredth, we're dividing by a factor of 10 each way. If we go this way, we're multiplying by a factor of 10. So we can see that this value is further to the right of the decimal. Those are smaller and smaller and smaller values as you go to the right. So 1 tenth, or if we thought of it in terms of money, this would be a dime, this would be a penny. A dime is greater than a penny. 1 tenth is greater than 1 one hundredth when we read them. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is rounding. When it comes to rounding decimals, we use the same rounding rules that we used before. We look to one value to the right of the digit we want to round. And if it's 5 or greater, we round up. If it's less than 5, we're going to round it off or just eliminate the values to the right. So if we're asked to round this number to the thousandths, I just have to look to the value to the right. Since this is greater than 5 or 5 or greater, I would round this value up. And I like to put a little arrow on there so I know I'm rounding it up. So 63 and 450 or 4,526 thousandths would then round to 63 and 400. 
53 thousandths. All right. The next one, we have negative 0 0.602, or we could read it as negative 602 thousandths. And we want to round it to the hundredths. To round this to the hundredths, it doesn't matter if it's a, a positive value or a negative value. It's an integer. We round them the same. It's going to maintain that integer value. We just need to round it. In this example, we're going to round it to the hundredths. So to round it to the hundredths, we look to the place to the right, the thousands. And we see this is a value less than 5. So we're going to round it off, which means we just eliminate the values to the right. So it would be 0.60. Or 60 one hundredths, and we might recognize that that's the same as 6 tenths. So we'd have negative 6 tenths or negative 60 one hundredths, a factor of 10. Now, what if we're dealing with money? One example is we go to the gas station and we see the price is 3.79 and 9 tenths per gallon. Well, I can't have 1 tenth of a penny, so they have to do their rounding, whether you do it at the pump or at some other point. Here's an example where we have uh, $0.025 or 25 thousandths of a dollar. Well, we have to do rounding when it comes to that. So we're going to round to the hundredths place. That's our penny position, our 1 one hundredth, 100 pennies per dollar. So if I'm going to round this, I look at this value, I see it's 5 or greater. So I'm going to round it up. So this becomes. Well, rounding 2 up 1 would be 3. And we're going to keep that unit, because that's important. We have 3 one hundredths, or 3 cents. We know there's 100 cents per dollar. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this example here. What if we wanted to round this to the nearest dollar? We're going to round this to the nearest dollar. Well, this is the ones place. And we're dealing with money, so we want to round off the cents. So here's a case where we look to this value and we see, well, I have to round this up because this is 5 or greater. Well, this is 9. And each place can only have the digits 0 through 9. If I go greater than 9, I have to carry. So that's what's going to happen here. So when I round this, I get 14,700. And this 9, because it becomes a 10, that's a 0 in the 1s, and I have to carry a 1, 6 and 1 is 7. So this would be $14,770. All right, one last example. And I'm going to have you do this one on your own. It's very similar to the last one. Uh, you just really have to know your place values. It says the attendance at a professional baseball game was 39,867 people. Round this number to the nearest 1,000. All right, so give that a shot. Hopefully, you're comfortable with rounding. And the more practice, the better you'll be. Thank you for watching.